another math video. Yes, we're in chapter 11 now. Woo, is that the last chapter? Yeah. So what are we looking at today, Mr. Wara? Great question there, my producer. We are looking at a lesson, 11.3, and that topic happens to be quadrilaterals. Oh, hold up, Mr. Wara. You have a feature animal you have not talked about. Now, you know why I have a producer. I, I just can't do the job by myself. Well, you know, it looks like we have a feature animal, and it looks like a manatee. Yeah, manatee, you are one of the most slow-moving mammals I can think of in the water. <laughs> just kidding. No, they seem so graceful the way they swim. It's too bad that so many of them are injured, you know, and... Um, what are they mostly in Florida? For what part of the country? I see a lot of them, and they're very, very large, but they move really slow. Mm, unfortunately, and fresh water, right? I believe they live in fresh water. Anywho, well, hey, welcome aboard there, Mr. Manatee. Good to have you. You know? Anything to get us to move on from that unicorn? I, I almost dare not say the name, because who knows? She might be back. You never know. Just kidding. Hey, our essential question for this lesson, my friends, this is our focus, our purpose. It is, how can you classify and compare quadrilaterals? Big, big topic for state testing, common core standards. It's big. So this is a must-see lesson, my friends. But first, unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. This is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says that a seating chart for a baseball field has many four-sided figures or quadrilaterals. What types of quadrilaterals can you find in the seating chart? Okay, I'm sorry there, Mr. Manatee. We're going to have to shrink you down. That's right, just a little bit. We like you. You seem so gentle. You're like the gentle giant of the freshwater. Now, it does say, uh, there's our picture that Mr. Manatee was covering. Look at that. Oh, I see all different types of quadrilaterals. Of course, quadrilaterals, it states four-sided figures. And it does say below, there are five special types of quadrilaterals. Again, there are five special types of quadrilaterals. Ooh, did I hear an echo? You can classify quadrilaterals by their properties. Properties just means what's their characteristics, things that make them up, who they are such as parallel sides and perpendicular sides. And parallel sides, you know about parallel lines. Yes, we learned this, I think. In first grade. No, maybe more like third grade or fourth grade, possibly. Parallel lines are like that set of railroad tracks, right? That they just say never cross. So those are parallel lines. They're equal distance apart, and they never collide with each other or intersect. Perpendicular sides make that wonderful 90-degree angle. 90 degrees. Now, since parallel lines are lines, oh, it's telling us, are lines that are always the same distance apart. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect to form four right angles. So let's go ahead and take a look down below. Complete the sentence that describes each type of quadrilateral. So a general quadrilateral says has four sides and four angles. Straightforward. Looks like a, just a regular, they call it a general. A regular quadrilateral has four sides. But a parallelogram one of the special types of quadrilaterals says that a parallelogram has opposite blank that are blank and parallel. So I'm going to say then a parallelogram has opposite sides, possibly. They have opposite sides that are, and we could say equal, but I also see this word congruent down here too. That works. And just as well, you learn that word congruent. So we have a parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent and parallel. And congruent means equal. And that's what that one little line here means. That line and that line there means we are equal. And because we don't want to draw another line here, because this, this side is not equal with that side. So they're letting you know only these two sides are equal. That's why you have two dashes there. I just thought you might want to know. Now we have a rectangle. It is also a special parallelogram. Aha, he's a parallelogram, but he's a special parallelogram. Because with a rectangle, it says here's a special parallelogram with, and it actually has four right angles. And you can see that because they put that little tiny square right there. It's not even a square, but it looks like a star. That lets you know that all of these angles here are 90 degrees. And 90 degrees is a right angle. And it also says it has four pairs of, well, they're not equal because look at, we have one line here, a line here. And look at, they used the two just in that, just like the parallelogram in that previous picture. So that just means that they actually have uh, parallel sides. They're parallel. This line segment here will never collide or intersect with that line segment up here. And same with the other two. Now it says a rhombus is a special parallelogram. 
Notice a rectangle and a rhombus is a type of parallelogram. And it says, but it has with blank congruent sides. I'm going to have to say four. I'm going to say four because look at the line. See one line here, one line there. See that? So because they all have the same, they all have one line there, a little dash. I don't know if this has a special name. I have no idea. But if you have two of them, then that means they're trying to show you that a different set of lines are congruent. And in this case, all four sides are congruent. Great. Now we move down to a square. It says a square is a special parallelogram. Look at another type of parallelogram with, and here it's saying it has four congruent sides because look at line, dash, dash, thank you, and has four right angles. And we can see that by our little angle here. See, it's letting us know that all those are right angles. Really, this is really easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of blank sides. I don't know, probably parallel sides, okay? Because I see two lines there that are parallel. This line looks parallel to that line there, equal distance apart, you can tell by looking. So that's important to know. Now this is something interesting because this word exactly, and I'm gonna make this point only to, for those maybe using other math program, but when you get up into higher level math, this word exactly is actually gonna turn into at least because technically a trapezoid is a figure with at least one pair of parallel sides. But for this test, probably for fifth grade, assuming the state test, they're using exactly one pair. But you're going to run into this. You can just kind of remember that you heard it from Mr. War first. Anyway, so the types of quadrilaterals you can find in the seating chart of the field are, well, let's take a look. Okay, I do see a rectangle. Do I see a trapezoid? I do see a trapezoid with just one, exactly one pair of parallel lines. Uh, do I see a square? Yeah, the square is right in there. That's part of the diamond. That looks like a square. And what about a rhombus? Well, rhombus doesn't have to have right angles, but it has to have, so I'm not sure if those are, those look like right angles. Uh, do I see one? I so I'm definitely, I think I, I definitely saw a square. Uh, I know I saw, looked look to me like there was one there was a trapezoid. And definitely a rectangle was there. And I was going to put quadrilateral, but it says the types of quadrilaterals. Parallelogram. But most important with this question is, is did we learn what all these figures were? What a parallelogram and the, the properties of a parallelogram and the properties of a rectangle and the properties of a rhombus. Did we get all that? That's probably the most important thing. And explain how are trapezoids and parallelograms different? Well, here it states a trapezoid is a, a quadrilateral, but has exactly one pair of parallel lines, whereas a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel lines. So that's for the math talk. All right, cool. Purge master. All right, moving on. Woo, yeah. Now we have here activity, quadrilaterals and scissors. So this is gonna be like a hands-on thing. Well, it could be hard for me to show you how I'm cutting up all my figures. So I'm just going to work with the Venn diagram. It does say you can use a Venn diagram to sort quadrilaterals and find out how they are related. Okay, draw the diagram below on your math board. Hey, you could do this in class. Yeah. Cut out the quadrilaterals and sort them into the Venn diagram. Got it. So you're going to actually cut out all the ones. I guess you have a page that goes along with this. Record your work by drawing each figure you have placed in the Venn diagram below. So I'm going to explain this a little bit different as I'm going along. And this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to kind of think of these guys here being part of different clubs. And the reason why I like this is because it makes it more clear who's allowed to go into each club. And like, here's a, a perfect example. Okay, we already know this. We have quadrilaterals here on the outside. So this big, huge box lets us know that quadrilaterals include parallelograms and includes trapezoids. See that big circle? Now they separate the trapezoids and the parallelograms apart from each other because they're different. According to our definition here with GoMath, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, has four sides, but it has exactly one pair of parallel lines, whereas a parallelogram has two. So we separated those two out. But look at here, we have rhombuses, we have rectangles and squares, all within inside the parallelogram because all of those figures are parallelograms. It says here, complete the sentence by writing always, sometimes, or never. 
So this is kind of interesting. So now that we have this figure to look at, all we need to do is kind of fill in the blank with those words. So first I'm going to say, it says a rhombus is blank a square. So we have squares that are in here. So you see a square? Yeah. Squares, the reason why squares are in here is because a square is, can be a rhombus. It could also be a rectangle. Okay, it's in both of those groups, it's both of those clubs. A square could get into the rectangle club. He's allowed because the only thing he needs is to have four right angles and two sets of parallel lines. And he has that. And for a rhombus, all he needs is four congruent sides. The square has that too. That's why he gets to be part of the rhombus club. So he can go into his club too. All right. But what's interesting is neither a rectangle nor a rhombus can ever enter into a square club because the square has a higher, higher threshold. His properties are much more than just having two sets of parallel lines and um, four right angles, but all his sides have to be congruent too, and you have to have all those things. A rhombus just has four equal sides, four congruent sides. So a rhombus could be a square sometimes, I would say. So a rhombus sometimes could be a square. It doesn't have to be a square, but then if we jump down here, it says a square is always, always a rhombus. Because if you're a square, you have four equal sides or four congruent sides, you're always a rhombus. That same rhombus, though, is sometimes a square. But it's not always a square and never doesn't seem to fit in there either. A parallelogram is sometimes a rectangle. Sometimes you could have a parallelogram because a rectangle is a type of parallelogram. So yeah, a parallelogram is sometimes a rectangle. Here it says a rhombus is sometimes a parallelogram. Always. It has to be always. A rhombus has four congruent sides, then those sides, definitely. So a rhombus always is a parallelogram. Now a trapezoid here is, yeah, never, never a parallelogram because a parallelogram has two sets of parallel lines. A trapezoid has exactly one. And so therefore it's never uh, a parallelogram. I think that makes sense with all that. Explain why the circle for parallelograms does not intersect a circle for trapezoids. Well, those parallelograms, have two sets of parallel lines, but a trapezoid has exactly one pair of, a symbol for parallel lines is this, if you believe it or not, two L's like that. Okay, that makes sense, that's a parallel line. Now explain why the section of the Venn diagram for squares intersects with both the section for rhombuses, or I think it's even called rhombi, if I'm not mistaken, but maybe rhombuses is correct as well, and the section for rectangles. Well, that's pretty simple because the square, the square can be, can be named as a rectangle and a rhombus because it meets the requirements, so like the properties of both. And we talked about that earlier because the square uh, has four equal sides. That's the only thing you need to get to be called a rhombus. And it has that. And a rectangle, the only thing you need is your four right angles, which creates your two sets of parallel lines, and the square has that too. So that makes the square part of both of those clubs. And that's why the square is being intersected by those two. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness, my friends, it's time. It's time. This video, I think, is probably one of the fastest videos on record. But you know what, my friends? It was just as much fun. I hope you learned a lot from this video. And. Oh, whoa, manatee. <laughs> hey, using the trick to, uh, that uh, Miss Unicorn. That's pretty good. I didn't know you were magical. What? Oh, hey, thanks for the plug. Yeah, okay. He's saying subscribe and like the video. Okay, one of my featured animals, they're like, they're pulling for me now. Woo, yeah. Right on, Mr. Manatee. Well, my friends, it is time. Live long and